Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in once again. Last week, as you already have seen, we had Mr. Boris Baski. We have seen how he was finding a hole in the mating net and uh, having, having a nice adventure with you, Frederick. So obviously, um, when we had Spassky last, last time, what will be the next world champion we are talking about today? It's all yours, Frederick. Well, uh, when I met Spassky, especially in St. John's, he told me all about his match against Fisher. And uh, he told me wonderful stories. Now, I have a background with Bobby Fisher, mm -hmm. who's today's uh, subject. And ever since I started to play chess seriously, I was in a small chess club, uh, <clears throat> I was fascinated by Fisher. He was my hero, of course. So all of my chess life, Fisher was my hero. And I spent a lot of time in California in my student days. And uh, from there, I tried to contact Fisher because, you know, he's my hero. And he had given up chess and uh, he was hiding in Pasadena. So I tried to call him and it never worked out. And... Uh, once I spoke to a lady, he was in the uh, some church, I don't remember the name of the church, mm -hmm. and there was a lady looking after him, her name was McCaro. And Claudia McCaro, I got her on the phone, and she discussed with him whether he would talk to me and so on. And then one day, she called me and said, you're from Germany, Frederick Friedel? I don't believe that. I said, why? And she says, your English is too good. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, I went to English schools and I uh, graduated in Oxford and so on. And But, you know, they were suspicious. <laughs> so I never got to talk to him. But every two years, I would write him a letter, handwritten on paper, and send it to Pasadena because I had the address. And nothing, never got a reply or anything. Well, well I decades, hope that, that's not the end of the story, though. <laughs> decades later, decades later, uh, I was, it was winter. I was just about to go out with my family and the phone rang. And uh, I said, should I take it? And my wife said, ah, take it, but be quick. So I took it and there was a voice which says, is this Mr. Friedel? <laughs> and I said, yes. He says, this is Bobby Fisher. Oh. And I said, come on. I thought it was a scam, some kind of a scam. He said, no, no, I'm Bobby Fisher. And I said, listen, I've been trying to contact you for more than 30 years now. <laughs> and suddenly you call me on the phone. And you know what he said? He said, I think it was more than 30 years ago when you sent me these handwritten letters to Pasadena, and he told me about something which was in one of the letters. So suddenly I realized this is Fisher. And then I spent an hour and a half talking to him. My wife and son went out for a walk. And then he kept calling. And uh, we had about 10 or 12, no, probably 15 uh, discussions, and all of them one hour at least. My goodness. And he had a free phone or something. And the point was he called me because he was interested in someone staging a match against Anand. And he had read that I was a good friend of Anand who stayed in my home and so on. So he said, oh. Frederick, you know, uh, we could organize this in the new chess. It's uh, This was Fisher Random Chess. The new chess. And... Uh, this could be very, very big. And I would give uh, all rights to chess space. And I said, well, and for how much? And he said, well, two or three million dollars. And I said, well, we can probably offer you two or three thousand dollars for it. Because, uh, you know, we're not such a giant company. And secondly, what do we get from it? Everyone will watch the games. And... Uh, he said branding and so on, and uh, I said, "Okay, let's let's discuss what can be done." 
and uh, I would like to give you some advice. And can we meet? And he said, no, no, no. I said, I'll come to Iceland. No. So he sent his best friend and his last friend uh, in Iceland, Gada Sverison, the only person he really trusted. And by the way, he told me again and again, don't trust anyone else. And I said, but you know, all your friends from, from Iceland uh, who helped you get out of your prison cell in Narita Airport and gave you citizenship and so on. No, 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 don't talk to any of them. Talk to only to Gada. Hey. And Gada actually came to Hamburg and stayed in my house and and um, it was sort of checking on me whether I was trustworthy, you know. Uh -huh. He went back with a report to Fisher saying, yeah, yeah, you can trust the guy, nice guy. And Gada is a personal friend since then. Okay. But Fisher gained my trust. No, <laughs> I gained his trust. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had these uh, conversations over months and he would call again and again and we discussed everything in life my goodness that is so, uh, that is uh, so what do you remember which time it was to was it already in the year 2000 something or in the 90s i think it was uh in uh, 2005. 2005, yes. All I right. I think so. But he soon uh, had one subject which he wanted to convince me of, mm -hmm. was that the games between Kasparov and Karpov, the World Championship matches, were all fixed. They were just staged, <laughs> you know. And he forced me to play through games with him, you know, <laughs> to show me why they would think. He had one slight problem because I would load the games on my screen and I would have Fritz running there and I would debate that with him. You know, he would say, now, obviously, this is and so on. And I would say, no, 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 wait a minute. And I'd give him a better line. <laughs> and he would be, you know, he had the opinion, I must be a very, very strong chess player. <laughs> of course, I told him, I'm, I'm using Fritz in the background, so... I can work out all the tactics. Oh. Anyway, we discussed that at great length. And he, uh, I think he had the impression that I was a very smart and intelligent person mm -hmm. with one or two defects. One of, one of them was I didn't understand that the matches were fixed. <laughs> and secondly, I didn't understand the giant conspiracy, world conspiracy of the Jews. And so he spent a lot of time trying to convince me. Wow. And uh, so we slowly, the conversations became very normal. And you you know me, I cannot resist uh, teasing people. <laughs> so I kept teasing him. And, I, and, and on a number of occasions, I thought, this is it. He'll never call me again. <laughs> but, you know, but he, and he would hang up, you know, and say, no, no, this is completely wrong. You don't know. You don't know what you're talking about, and bang, it would be over. And I said, okay, this is it. But then a week later, he would call and said, you know, I've been thinking about what you said, and I, I'll show you why you were wrong. And then it would go on and on and on. Wow. And I also teased him a lot. You know, I told him, okay, you know, you're getting old, Bobby. So uh, you couldn't handle the time controls, you know, you were <laughs> running out of time. So you invented a clock, which gives you extra time. And now you can't keep up with the openings preparations of all the top grandmasters. So you invented a form of chess where no openings preparation is possible mm -hmm. to eliminate that. So I suggested to him that he should do one more thing. He said he should propose a form of chess called the retractor, which is instead of making your next move, you can always take back <laughs> your uh, opponent's move and then your previous move and play something else. <laughs> and I formulated this very nicely. And he, he thought this was very, uh, very rude of me, <laughs> but, but only initially. And I wrote an article 
on the first of April announcing Fisher's pro has uh, <laughs> proposed this. The retract. And chest. he read this and he said, okay, this this is funny. You know, this is really funny. <laughs> and he understood the, the hmm. humor. So, but after all, you never, ever met him in person. It was still... No, I never met him in person. Do like you... nobody did. I think yeah. maybe Anand did, but nobody oh. else. And do you remember what your very last call with him was about? Yes, the last calls were about his health, huh. because he had uh, he had a problem uh, with with his kidneys, mm -hmm. and uh, I researched it on the internet and I talked about it. And Garda's wife, he Fisher lived in the same house apartment building as Gada. He had a flat there. And uh, Gada's wife is a nurse, and she looked after him. And so they'd go there every day, and, and they saw him deteriorating. And uh, they asked me also, can you convince him he has to go to hospital? He has to have his, his kidneys. Uh, he, has, he needs dialysis and so on. But he refused, because he was very suspicious of of everything, of everyone and everything. So doctors wow. were there to uh, kill him or spy on him or something. So it, he never, I didn't succeed in convincing him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at one stage, one morning, he called me at two o'clock in the morning and I said to him, uh, after we'd spoken for half an hour, I said, Bobby, you can't call me at two o'clock in the morning and rant about Jews. I, I can't handle this. And he said, okay. And he hang, hung up and never called again. I called him a couple of times because I had some reason to do so. And he took the calls, but, but he never initiated a call himself. And it was also because he was his health was deteriorating very yeah. badly. And then one day I was driving to the tournament in Vaikanze and Nadia, you know, who works for us. Yeah. Uh, she called me in my car and said, Fisher died last night. And then all of it, you know, uh, it was, it was a tragedy. It was, mm. it came, I expected it, but it came very suddenly mm -hmm. in that moment. I had to do interviews with, BBC and so on, they called me and I was pretty shattered. Yeah. And then some years later, uh, many years later, I was in Iceland on a trip, you know, and just, it's a wonderful place, a wonderful mm -hmm. island and so on. And I met Gardar, of course, and he took me to all the places where Spassky versus Fisher, the tournament hall, where the cameras were placed, the room at the back, the ping pong room where they had to play, his flat where he stayed. And so I could relive all of it. And they have a sort of a museum dot yeah. there where you can see the pictures, the cartoons, everything from the, from the time. That is fairly interesting. And funnily enough, although he was the very first one of all the champions you didn't see in person, it seems to me this one was one of the most intense relationship uh, so well, far. Uh, well, yeah, no, well, yes, possibly so far, because uh, after that came uh, Kasparov <laughs> and Anand and so There's And some Anand come, practically yeah. lived here. <laughs> and he grew up in the house, so you can't say it was less intense. No, no, surely. No, no until, until now, this is what I meant. Yes, there's more yeah. to come soon for you, of course. And by the way, yeah, you probably have noticed already the setup of the Gaudi uh, clock and the Fisher chair and even the Spassky chair of the first round. So that's quite appropriate. 50 I years later. I thought I saw something that uh, I recognize. It, is, it, is it the table on which they played? It's exactly the table. We got <coughs> it here. Uh, it was a 
very, very intense uh, situation. So we were five people, but we really caught this table. Well, it's of course a little bit of a replica. Let's say it like this. It yes, uh, of course. wasn't it's the, not the original, original one, game. unfortunately, but thank you for, for playing the game with me that it is the original one. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick, that was uh, Mr. Bobby Fisher. Absolutely interesting and fascinating. I'm looking forward to the next World Champion 2 because this is not going to be one singular part. This is going to be definitely more than one part. So uh, we will see each other next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your likes. Great. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.